Hello, my name's Ray Michelina with the TJ Snow Company. Today we're going to look at changing electrodes. We have several different styles of electrode holders here, several different styles of electrodes that we're going to go ahead and take a look at just a simple electrode change. When we change electrodes, we have two different sources of water that we have to make sure that are turned off. So we have our water manifolds here. We have our incoming water, which is the blue manifold and blue hoses. We will need to make sure that water is turned off. Also, the water going out, the red side, the red hose, the red manifold, we'll make sure that that water is off also. The next thing that we're going to want to make sure is our weld control is turned off. We do not want the weld control to be turned on when we are changing the electrodes just to make sure that we do not initiate the welder accidentally while we're changing electrodes. Before we change any electrodes, we want to make sure that we have the right tools in order to do that. We have these different tip extractors that we're going to use. We have one for male caps one for female caps, and then we have this universal uh, tool to change the tips. So when we're talking about the different male and female caps, this is considered a male cap, this is considered a female cap. And so each one is going to have its own tip extractor that we can use to change those. There's several different types of holders. There's ejector type holders, which we have here, and that's what this button is. And so you take a hammer, and what you'll do is you'll tap this on the bottom side, and you'll see that the electrode comes out very easy. So this is an ejector style electrode holder. The same thing is true with this style of electrode uh, holder, that you loosen this knurled nut up and you do the same thing. Basically that you hit the bottom of this and it ejects the electrode out. We also have the same type in the offset type electrode holder where this does not have any ejector button on it so you have to use a tool to be able to extract the electrode. We do have the other type that has a screw-in electrode holder and it does not have an ejector type so you have to use tools in order to take that out. Some of our electrode holders do have the ejector button on there where it's the same thing that you would take a hammer, you would tap the bottom of it until it, the uh, electrode come out of that holder also. So using the proper tools to take the electrodes out is very important when we are dealing with changing the electrodes on a resistance welder. Next we're going to show how to actually change an electrode. This electrode has a shank with a cap and so it has a male cap. We're going to use the male uh, uh, cap extractor tool. So what we do is we put that in the space between the cap and the shank and we remove the cap. And you can put that on and just the action of squeezing together should pop it out. If it does seem like that it's in there fairly hard, you may have to uh, put the extractor onto the shank and the electrode and actually pry back and forth to pop it out a little bit. So this is one way that we are going to change the tips. We want to make sure that the water tube is in place on our electrodes. So we'll do the same to the top one and so we'll pop it out. Now notice we do not have a water tube in the top electrode holder. And so that's important that we make sure that water tube is in there. And so what we need to do is we need to find the proper water tube to put back into our holder. And you can see inside this holder there will be an adapter that a water tube fits into such as this. There's several different lengths, several di different uh, 
diameters of water tubes, you have to make sure that you find the right one for the system that you are using. Because that water tube needs to be able to come all the way down into the tip of that electrode. So make sure that water tube is inside the electrode holder just the same as we have here on the bottom. That's going to be very important for the cooling of our electrode tips. So don't remove those water tubes. Make sure that they're long enough for the tip. We also have some electrodes that will have a water tube in them already. With this style electrode, when it goes into the holder, you can see that it's going to need an adapter inside there for that water tube to slide into. So just the same as we have this shank right here that we had for the cap, if we were to put this style of electrode in there, this water tube would need to go into the adapter. And so we have several different types. We have the electrode shank without the water tube that will need the water tube in there or the type that has the, uh, the water tube already in it. And so our cap would go on it just like this. And so we want to make sure that we do not put anything on the electrodes when we put those electrodes or the caps into place here. <clears throat> what I would suggest is using Scotch-Brite to clean that surface of those electrodes when we put those electrodes, the shank or the cap, into place. You can see that I've got a big piece of red Scotch-Brite material and what I do is I normally cut it into three pieces. Having this big piece trying to use it just gets in the way. So I cut it into three little pieces that I can easily use. And so when I'm taking a new electrode, what, what, what I'll do is I'll get rid of that oxidization on here. And so I'll take my Scotch-Brite and just a few uh, swirls of that Scotch-Brite cleans that oxidization off there and makes a very clean tip. We have a compound that we like to use also. It's carbon conductive grease. This is just a dielectric grease that is very conductive. In fact, it says it in the title of the material. If the product that you're using doesn't say anything about being conductive, it isn't. And so that you want to make sure that the product that you're using is going to be conductive. So carbon conductive grease says everywhere on it about being conductive. If you read on the back of it, it says that it's good for high temperatures, which we have here in our resistance welding. And so what you'll do is you'll take just a small little dab of this carbon conductive grease that you will rub it into the surface of the electrode and you can see that it's left a quite a uh, mess on the electrode. What you're going to want to do is wipe your hands off after rubbing it into the pores of the electrode and you're going to just want to leave a really thin film. We do not want to leave a lot of the product on the electrode. We just want to fill the pores of the electrode. So this is what we're looking at a very thin film. So when we put this electrode into our electrode holder, that's going to allow that conductivity to be a lot better where we won't have the opportunity for that electrode to weld itself inside the holder. And we can do the very same thing with the electrode caps. If I were to put a new cap into this holder here, I would go ahead and do the same thing. I would clean the taper off with my Scotch-Brite, just like that I've done here. Take a little bit of the carbon conductive grease, rub it into the pores of our cap, wipe my fingers off, and like you can see, it's carbon. It soaks into your skin. If we were doing this uh, in a normal production, I would advertise make using the rubber gloves to protect your hands from the carbon conductive grease. And you can see that the grease does get all over, and so you're going to want to make sure that you are very careful with it and only leave a thin film. 
So when we put that electrode in there, we're going to have a better contact. It's going to seal the pores of the electrode so we don't have that corrosion buildup. And again, if we wanted to change our electrode, <coughs> this is an ejector type, so we would loosen up this holder and we would hit the bottom of it here and it would knock the whole shank out. And so we can either change the cap or we can change the entire electrode on this type of uh, holder on our welder. So you want to make sure when you are changing the electrodes that you are prepared with the right tools. You're prepared with the right compound if you're going to use any type of compound to change out your electrodes and make sure that you know what type of holder that you're using because it's going to make a difference what type of water tube that you are using. So after we are finished with our welder that we're going to want to seat the electrodes and normally just take say just a small bump with a uh, hammer. You can use a regular hammer. Uh, you can use a rubber mallet. You can use a rawhide mallet. But you don't want to damage the surface of the electrode, but you want to seat it. Because when we turn the water back onto this, we want to make sure that that electrode is seated so that we don't have a water leak. If your electrodes are leaking water, usually they're worn out. The taper is worn out, and so the only thing that you can do at that point is either change the shank, the adapter, the, uh, or the tip itself. And so there's really no way to fix it. You can't put any pipe tape on it. You can't use any uh, like pipe compound because this is an electrical circuit. We must pass current through these copper components. Anything that we put on here that is not a dielectric type material will cause a resistance. It will cause the current not to flow evenly into our weld. Now that we made sure our electrodes are in place and we've seated our electrodes, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the water is turned on. So what we're going to do is turn the water on for our incoming water and we're going to turn the water also back to the water going out. So we want to make sure both of those valves are open. And so in our digital flow meter right here, it's going to show us that we do have water flow. And this is hooked up to our well control, so if we do not have any water, that it will not allow us to weld. It's a very good thing to have on your resistance welding machine, just as a safety to make sure that you have water before you go to weld. One of the things I would suggest you have are tip catalogs. These electrode catalogs are very good reference material just to give you an idea what type of electrodes are out there, what style and what size. They also have a lot of good suggestions in these catalogs about your electrodes also. And there are several different types, whatever type that you use, be sure to have the reference material for that. We haven't talked about dressing the electrodes or cleaning the electrodes up. We would not suggest using a file. If you're using a file now, there's several different uh, better methods of making sure that your tips are the right shape. And so using a dressing tool is what we would suggest that you use. If you have any questions on changing your electrodes or electrode styles that work best for you, give us a call here at TJ Snow. Look on our website. We have uh, several good references, um, reference materials that you can use. So look us up, tjsnow.com. <laughs>